Fun. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Boone Val, and it is May the 4th. It's May the 4th. I'm pumped. Uh, I feel like I got this stream by default because why not? <laughs> this is true. Um, but I'm this is super true. excited. Also, I think I realized that I'm the guest and I think that I just. Yeah, I was like, you stream. took my talking parts. I'm, I'm so host, sorry. If you're going to do it, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. This sorry. Is the Star I'm, Wars I'm on thing. autopilot. <laughs> Literally an autopilot. You got yes. the helmet to yep, show that yep. you're on autopilot too. <laughs> um, but yes, as, as Val said, it is May the 4th. Uh, I'm so happy to be hosting Val because as you all may know, she's pretty into Star Wars and I myself am a Star Wars geek as well. I grew up with the movies. They're very dear and close to my childhood and heart. So I'm happy to be a part of this sci-fi week extravaganza. And speaking of sci-fi week, Here's what we have in store for you all. As you can see, it is themed after a certain franchise that we all very much well know and love. So right now, I am live with Voodoo Val. Then we'll have the illustration challenge with Julie Vaca. And then afterwards, at 12 p.m., we're going to have Brady from Texture Labs, who's actually going to do some really cool propaganda posters themed after Star Wars. So stick around for that. I um, want to say hello to the chat. Oh, man, we got all the friends in here. Look at this chat blowing up. We got I Robert, know. RB, Umicorn, Apura, Gareth, Sean, General Kenobi. Very fitting for you to be in the chat, my friends. Hello Wonder there. Gonna be. Hello there. <laughs> uh, Anthony Jackson, Stony, Clever. Wow, we got everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. I am in the mountainside. That is obviously in a Sith Lord purple-themed dark ship. Mm -hmm. So she's exactly. tuning in from space. I am. Uh, I am on Exegol as we speak. Um, I've got. There, yeah. I've got my Sith troopers. Check uh, that out. You know, um, I. I had to represent with like a Sith T-shirt since I'm wearing Poe Dameron's helmet. But honestly, if they didn't want the bad guys to appreciate Poe's helmet, they shouldn't have made it black and red. That's yeah. You know, it's a little confusing, isn't it? It's very that is confusing. Poe Dameron's helmet, which is in the new movies. Yes. He's an ace fighter pilot, but it is a little confusing with that color scheme. Hmm. And he still wears like the orange jumpsuit with the white vest and then just this. So it's like you're sending me mixed signals here, Poe, and I appreciate it, but I'm just very confused. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah, um, I'm super pumped. This is yeah, going to be so fun. Yeah, I'm super fun. pumped too. This is a sci-fi themed week. Like I said, I'm, I'm geeking out over here just watching all the Star Wars themed content. It's awesome. It's amazing. We had Jay yesterday who has actually worked on concept arts on the movies, the prequel. Mm -hmm. So very fun week that we have. Uh, without further ado, Val, let us know what is in store for today. And in case people may not know you, why don't you give a super quick, like one minute elevator pitch of who you are and maybe just show some of your work. I assume yeah. most of the community already knows you because Val is very close to the Adobe Live family. She streams a lot for us. But in case people may not know you, let's give them a real quick TLDR of who you are. All right. So my name is Voodoo Val. Um, I am predominantly an illustrator. I, um, I I love to paint characters, portraits specifically. I like to design monsters and write stories and stuff like that. I'm going to pull up my my Star Wars stuff on Behance just so you folks yeah, can see, see a little, little bit of my work. There um, it is. Check that out. Yeah. So I've done, I, I, I'll i focus on Star Wars for today because I feel like it's on theme. Um, but I do a lot of Star Wars fan art. Um, I had the wonderful pleasure of being able to do a painting of Captain Phasma, which was displayed at the red yeah, carpet cool. premiere of The Last Jedi. Got a picture um, of her on the red carpet where all of the fan art and stuff was displayed, which is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of a lot of portraits. Um, I'm a fan of the dark side. I don't know if you can tell. It's there's a lot of bad guys um, in known. this project. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Obviously, there's a three PO because he's a precious sweet baby bean. Um, but everybody else is just not great. Even even the Luke Skywalker is terrifying because why Check not? Check that out. Um, but I love painting portraits. I love um, designing monsters, writing stories, anything that's like science fiction or dark fantasy is kind of my jam. Um, I also do some graphic design. Uh, you may uh, recognize me as one of the instructors here on Adobe Live uh, for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges. Um, I've done some Creative Cloud Express streams and stuff like that, but mostly my bread and butter is painting in Photoshop. Um, and uh, for today, I gotta ask, oh, favorite go for it. favorite 
dark lord character go real quick um i think honestly my favorite like sith character is probably darth revan but my favorite star wars character like of all time is grand admiral thrawn um thrawn is he's not a force user he is just really 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 smart um and i just really enjoy his story especially now that there's new books coming out i think he's going to be in the next season of the mandalorian so i'm kind of losing my mind over that um and yeah he's so he's my favorite um he's very fancy he's got great eyes better eyebrows you know it's just he's cool he's all good eyebrows yeah he's pretty fancy um but yeah so um let me know in the chat who is your favorite star wars character i gotta know i want to know who your favorite character is and why um and i will judge harshly that's just a symptom of the day today um but yeah welcome in folks um and i'm gonna i'm gonna let you know uh what we're gonna be getting into for today so um i am gonna do three tribute pieces to each of the star wars trilogies so we're gonna be working on illustrations today um and each illustration will be something that we will use tomorrow to put together some cool posters and things like that. We might get into a little bit of animation maybe tomorrow if we have some time. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a tribute uh, postcard um, to Tatooine um because no, so obviously um, Tatooine. I actually need to double check that Tatooine has one like like a double T in the middle there, or just one? I'm pretty uh, sure let me, it's two. Check for you. Yeah, it's. I think you have it Oh, right. only one, only one. So I'm gonna have to change the spelling. Uh, Again, right, one T, two O's. So yeah. I am an illustrator, uh, not queen of the spelling bee. So this is gonna happen a lot. <laughs> this is just what happens. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a like a little landscape painting for Tatooine. Um, we're going to paint a Viper Pro droid because um, we're gonna do like a funny. Um, kind of diagram poster of the probe droid. Um, and then we are going to illustrate um, the Sith Wayfinder uh, from the newer films, which I'm pretty pumped about. So I've got my sketches prepared um, and I think I'm actually going to begin with the Wayfinder just because it's a simple shape compared to a lot of the stuff we're doing. And I think I can get through it pretty quickly. So I'm gonna turn my opacity down um, on this layer and I am going to get to work. Um, Let's do it. In the meantime, I'm gonna see what the chat is saying. We got a lot of comments. Uh, General Kenobi does have to ask, and I think it's a very important question. Okay. Is, have you heard of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis is the wise? Yes, I have. Um, very wise guy, very smart, uh, very, very old. Smart. Little funny mm -hmm. looking, but hey, um, when you're that old, I don't think that you can, you can get away from that. Um, I'm also, I'm looking, I'm, I'm checking the chat too, and I see a lot of love for Mace Windu. Honestly, me Mace too. Windu's good. Yeah, same, because uh, because of Samuel L. Jackson, I can have a purple lightsaber if I so choose. Um, so yeah, mad and respect I do for think, that. I do think he's got probably one of the coolest lightsabers that they designed. He really does. So if you look at the hilt, I think it's one of the cooler designs that they've done. And it's kind of cool how he got the purple lightsaber, because like I said, I used to watch these kids religiously as a kid, and I would watch the behind the scenes with my brother. And I'm pretty sure he was just, George Lucas was talking to him. And then he was like, can I have a purple lightsaber? And he's, he's like, like I don't know, maybe. And he's like, wait, really? I was kind of joking. But yeah, they gave him a purple lightsaber just by him asking. I believe so. he said, like, George was like, well, you know, good guys have green and blue and bad guys have red. And Samuel L. just kind of looked at him like, like the, I'm Samuel L. Jackson. It's gonna be purple. And he was like, are you sure? Like, and he just asked again. And George was like, we'll see. And he did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there is a little bit of lore behind the reasoning for it. Um, and I, I think, I feel like they had to create lore so that he could have um, his purple lightsaber. And um, part of that is uh, Mace Windu is very unique in that he uses a particular um, kind of force technique that includes um, I guess it includes dark side energy um, and so he has uh, okay. a little a little that. red tint to his lightsaber um, I believe it's called Faypad, and it's like using um, 
like dark energy and um, dark force against your opponent um, that they give to you. So it's not, I don't, I don't believe like he's dark. And so he uses um, the dark side. I believe he kind of like, I'm rubber, you're glue. Anything you say to me <laughs> sticks to you. Six, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, kind of cool. You know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, fancy lore there so they're like, oh okay so he had a blue lightsaber and it's got a bit of red in it so it's purple um yeah um gabriel's saying he uses vapad vapad mm -hmm. i don't even know how to pronounce that so he knows he knows the lore that's yeah. pretty cool got some star um, wars have, fans in the chat yeah we got some other people in the chat saying stony loved the ewoks um rob says his dog has an ewok costume that's amazing can you imagine just a little fluff ball running around with an Ewok costume. That's Which is cool. just an Ewok, but I appreciate that it That's would true. be even smaller than an mm -hmm. Ewok. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, so I've got, I just like kind of made myself a shape. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start carving um, like these planes into this shape. I think I'm actually gonna turn the opacity up um, and I'm going to uh, control U um, or command U if you're using a Mac. And I'm just going to make this gray um, and then bump it down slightly so I can still see my sketch through. Or actually, I could put my sketch on top and work underneath it, which is probably better because I want to make sure that I just have the opacity up um, totally. And what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to build out these shapes um and then i'm going to go in with some clipping masks and i'm going to paint the shapes um is kind of the deal here and after i paint these shapes and i am going to get a little more detailed and like make this look super cool this is like one of the coolest artifacts that came out of the new film so gotta show it some love and gotta make it yeah. look awesome you know does anybody um, know what movie it was featured in? Because I think it, it was first introduced in one film, right? I, mm -hmm. mean, I already know the answer, but let's see if the chat knows. I'm going um, so yeah, to remove was a new myself from all um, Star Wars trivia. I feel like I have to. <laughs> you have to, yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like I know a good amount, but you, I think you know a little more on the lore side than me. I just watched the movies. I haven't. I don't really read anything outside of that. But I feel like the series, the new shows that they're coming out with, are paying good justice to the expanded universe, which I think yeah, is they're doing cool. a pretty good job. They're they're doing a pretty yeah. awesome job. I would love to know um, if anyone has like a favorite new show or like what your favorite movie is um, and why, because there's a lot of there's a lot of content out um, right now uh, in the last several years. It's kind of like just. Star Wars has kind of exploded. Um, and it so has. there's just like something for everybody now, which is just crazy and awesome. Um, where at uh, first all we had was books and comics. Now we have yeah. everything. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. Uh, I think Gabriel nailed it. Sith Wayfinder episode nine. Yes. Rise mm -hmm. of Skywalker. I think Gabriel knows the Star Wars pretty well. Seems like it. I feel like I have attracted a lot of like minds to these streams. Like I'm surprised <laughs> constantly when I'm nerding out about Star Wars and I'm thinking to myself, I'm moderating right now. I should probably not do this, but the chat is also nerding out about Star Wars. To it. <laughs> They're picking up what I'm putting down. I'm not alone. They're picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> All right. I'm also, uh, for anyone who's wondering how I'm like cleaning up these lines, even though I'm painting, I'm just holding shift. So I, I'm tapping and then I hold shift and then I tap um, where I want the line to terminate. Um, and it kind of draws a nice straight line for me. So I do use like my uh, polygonal lasso tool a lot when I am designing, uh, but sometimes it's it's just like a lot of steps and it's a lot of work when I really just want to be painting. Um, and so this gives me the opportunity if I don't want to um, use the shape tool or use the pen tool or um, anything like that, I can just literally take the time to paint it and I just have like a, a nice ruler of sorts, I guess, without having to um, break out the other tools. Uh, so it's good fun. 
Nice. Uh, there's there's some shade being thrown in the chat. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah, we have uh, we have Garrett saying the Christmas special is the best. Yeah, Garrett needs Steve to be is saying Voodoo Val loves the Xmas special. Uh, funny story about that. I actually just kind of skimmed through it this morning. It's, it's not on the good. top page of um, Reddit, and I was like, "Oh, I've never, I've never seen this." And I didn't watch all of it, but I just kind of skimmed through it, and I'm like, "This is, this is something else." They paid like, them. How for on that. earth did this air? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, it's, it is. It's, it's something special. It literally, like, <laughs> it's you know, I would, special. I would say, I would say, go and watch it just, just to just see, like, how did this ever get green lit? <laughs> It's, it's pretty bad. I mean, there's a part where like some Wookiee puts on like some VR headset and there's like this transcendental trippy sequence with some art. I oh, man, it's it went off the rails. It's not but, great. Uh, yeah. it's, that was it's kind it was, of it was entertaining like, in its own special way. But yeah, so I can totally see. <laughs> yeah, I can see how people just, you know, have collectively agreed. We just don't really acknowledge his existence. It's worse than Fight Club. It's not like Fight Club, Fight Club still. Yeah, Fight, Fight Club still happens. You, like you just Club? don't talk. No, I love. Talk oh, Fight Club. I, like, I just mean the movie? rules of Fight Club. Yeah, like, the you don't about, talk about Fight yeah. Club. At least Fight Club still exists and you just don't talk about it. This we don't talk about and we try we to forget it, it ever happened. Is yeah, kind the of first the thing deal. about the Xmas special is you don't talk about the Xmas special. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Second rule of the Xmas special is you don't tell people about it on a live stream so they'll look it up and bring it back into existence, Paco. <laughs> yeah. That's the it's gonna get rule. its cold following. Hey, I didn't bring it up, the chat brought it up. That's true. All right. My job is to read the chat, so I'm paying them justice. But yes, I agree. <laughs> uh that is it's something else. It is something else. I've been harassed by Steve. Um on multiple occasions specifically about um the star wars special and it's it, it hurts man i thought we were friends it hurts <laughs> it's 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 difficult um i see stony talking about the bad batch so the bad batch is is awesome i have not finished the show um yet but i highly recommend the bad batch i think it's really excellent what what they've done i think that not only is it a great story with great characters but i feel like it's also just it takes people who are not maybe in other stories would not be considered able-bodied like people who have um physical disabilities and um uh like these illnesses and and things that maybe kids who are watching this show might not feel like if they have these things that they can't be the hero and it takes a huge cast of people and makes them the coolest people in the galaxy so the bad batch is literally it's it's like a reference to the clones that were created with defects and how even though they're not exactly the same as all of the perfect clones, they still have their own strengths and their own awesome features. And they use what you might assume is a weakness and turn it into their greatest superpower. So it's it's That's super cool. amazing. Um, it, I, it's an I've awesome no story. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard of the Bad Batch. Um, I've never watched it again. I, I haven't really watched anything outside of the movies, uh, but I do love that premise. That it's, seems pretty, it's pretty darn cool. And yeah. they're literally, they're some of the coolest characters that I've seen in Star Wars. Um, and I feel like they've done a, a super cool. So there, I watched the animated series, and they have a whole arc about the Bad Batch and how one of the main characters from the show ends up being inducted into the Bad Batch after he is wounded and feels like he can't fight with his brothers anymore. And the Bad Batch is like, nah, dog, we got you. We you good? Come, 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 to, come over here. Come the water's in just us. fine. Yeah. So he <laughs> um, he joins the Bad Batch and then now they, they have a show about their um, adventures. And let me tell you, these guys are rowdy. They're very rowdy. Rowdy bunch. <laughs> yeah, super rowdy bunch. Very cool dudes. Um, all, all right. right. So I've cool. got. So what are we doing? What are we doing here? I What's am next just kind with the of wayfinder? kind of doing um, these like just shading the edges and like making this kind of bringing it into 3D space a little bit so that it's not flat. Um, I'm gonna do just a tiny bit more um, over here on this end just to bring this uh, out over here just to give it like a little lip underneath here but um, 
after Ooh, that, we're cool. going to get into painting. So just kind of trying to really carve this out into um, uh, an, an item, you know, something that uh, looks like it is 3D and not a flat design because I want to illustrate it. And I'm doing some hard lines here and I am going to end up softening these with like a textured brush, maybe something like, like this. Um, let me get something softer than that. In fact, actually, I might do my handy dandy um, uh, noise brush technique, uh, which is I grab a soft round uh, opacity brush and I just turn the mode to dissolve. Um, and a, I feel like a lot of people don't use the dissolve brush mode, um, but it's one of my favorite things. Um, I love it. And it just like, if I zoom in here, it literally just makes your soft round brush into like a noise brush and you can paint with noise. Um, and I love it's it. It's literally a noise brush. I it's like it. Super, it's literally a noise brush. Um, and I love to use it because um, I spend a lot of time creating noise textures from scratch and uh, or finding noise textures um, online that will suit my purposes uh, and overlaying stuff. And then I always end up feeling like it's lacking a little bit. Like I always end up feeling like I, okay, I've put the texture here, um, but if I change my mind about a certain portion of the design, then I have to go back and I have to paint those corrections in or edit those corrections. And um, then I have to reorient the texture, the image texture that I placed in there. And I can't, you know, it's just hard to change. But with this, I literally have um, the ability to paint in any bit of noise that I see fit uh, at will. Um, and as an illustrator, it might not work for everybody, but as somebody who loves to paint and paint is painting is like my main thing, um, it's nice just to have that control right uh just yeah. to 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 paint it in rather than um work with the texture so um yeah I'm and even adding that. those simple strokes is really giving a lot more depth to this sith wayfinder that's crazy yeah. just th these different shadings of gray that you're using are really selling this 3d effect so pretty cool folks i feel Stuff like here. i could probably spend a, a little more time like really making it um slightly more accurate but i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna kind of drop in uh what i need to get the illustration across um and paint most of it for today and then i i expect that between today and tomorrow i will you know kind of do a little cleaning up um and making things a little bit more accurate uh for the next part of it tomorrow. Um, however, if I do end up um, working on some things between now and tomorrow, um, tomorrow when we begin, um, I will go over um, the techniques and any little things that I changed uh, during the break. Um, because one thing that I do like to do for all of you folks, um, if I ever do any work, um, between streams is to you know show you the changes but also like show you how i uh, how i did it so that if you are following along with me you don't miss any steps right. um because i want you to be able to watch how i'm doing things and if you want to repurpose these techniques for something of your own you have the knowledge to do that um okay yeah and you i'm noticing you're the shortcut master here in photoshop <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think shortcuts are one of those things using Adobe apps. If you're really using these day in, day out, and you're doing the same task over and over. Trust me, folks, learn that shortcut. And I, I read some crazy stat where like, say it shaves off like a second. Might not sound like a lot, but if you're living in these apps, which a lot of creative professionals do, and you're just hitting that shortcut over and over and over, say, you know, it accumulates to like a minute and a half in a day. And you multiply that by like five, six days a week over years. It could shave off hours. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will about. tell you honestly, but. when I started using um, shortcuts, it cut my production time in half. In yeah, half. but then you still bill for the same amount. So it's a win-win. There you go. Boom. Fancy. <laughs> Uh, no, but really, I it, it cut it cut my my work time in half. And what I did was I um, I'm sure we could get a link in the chat. There's a really helpful um, link uh, that Adobe has out that um, uh, just goes over all of the shortcuts. Um, 
in everything that uh, you can do in Photoshop. It just goes over all of the hotkeys. Um, and I printed it out and I, I put it, uh, taped it to the wall behind my monitor so that I could look at it constantly. Um, and then I also made another list that I put next to it and it was a list of all the short keys for the tools that I use most often. Um, so there are a lot of hotkeys that I don't have memorized that I don't know, but I, um, I, cause I focus on what am I going to use the most and what is going to be the best for my personal, um, workflow. And that's what I did. And um, you can also, um, if I come up here to edit um, and scroll down to the bottom here, um, you can go to keyboard shortcuts. And I've also customized some. So I went Ooh. to image and I scroll down to, um, I should have, yeah, flip canvas horizontal. So I routed flip, flip canvas horizontal to control shift A. Um, because if I do control shift a, it'll flip it for me. And this is a really great thing to do when you illustrate or design, because, uh, sometimes if you've ever like been looking at your, your painting and you're like, there's something that's not quite right about this. And I don't know exactly what it is. I can't put my finger on it. Um, it's usually that something is slightly off in your piece, either the, um, maybe the perspective or just something is weird, but you can't see it because you've been staring at your piece for so long. You know, you can't really pick it out because it started to look so familiar to you. Um, flipping your canvas horizontal is like a, an expedited version of taking a break from your piece. All of a sudden you see the piece in a totally new orientation in a totally different light. And you can pick out most very often, you can pick out the issue that you were noticing but couldn't quite put your finger on, you can pick it out immediately, um, just looking at it in a different orientation. So I have that routed um, for all of you uh, illustrators and painters out there. Um, that is a huge tip that I suggest you employ because it will help, aside from um, learning the hotkeys. Um, really, really good idea to do that. That's a very good pro um, tip. When in doubt, flip it. Yep. Uh, um, Kenobi has okay. pretty smart. He says when we were talking about cutting time in half, he goes, it, it's cut like Darth Maul. In yeah. Half. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're not yes. wrong. <laughs> let, let it flow through you, y'all. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I've got the Wayfinder painted in here. I'm going to, oops, I don't want that. I, what I want is actually, um, hmm. I've got a conundrum here. And that is uh, that I have, I'm using clipping masks to clip all of this stuff to this, but I have painted this in, where is this? Okay, uh, another really good tip. Um, so you can hold control and you can click things and you can see in my layers panel that it selects um, the layer of whatever it is that I just tapped. The thing is That's sometimes cool. you have uh, layers that are on a lower opacity so you can see things through it and you go to click something because I'm trying to click the solid color of this shape and when I click it it selects the sketch layer that's over top of it but if I want to I can hold control and do a left click or I'm just tapping on my stylus but I believe it's a left no it's a right click um, I just did it with my mouse to double check it will actually show you a list of all of the layers that are directly under your cursor so I can cycle through. I think what I'm going to do using actually, a Wacom off screen valve. Yeah, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. So I have the Wacom display Cintiq. screen um, where I can look down at my screen and and paint. Nice. Um, so it's this layer here, the shape that everything's clipped to. And I don't want to turn the opacity down or alter that at all, because then it will change these masks that are clipped to it. So what I'm going to do is lock transparency uh, and I'm going to paint directly onto this layer with my green and I should be able to, there's something else that's barring me from this. What, Clipping mask for it? the wind. Yeah. General I've Kenobi's cracking to... me up. He goes, try spinning the canvas. That's a good trick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> um, you can actually spin the canvas um, if you hit R oh, on your boy. keyboard. <laughs> so there you go. Um, there you go. I think, let me hide my sketch. Like that. Got a question from the chat whenever you're ready for it, Val. Yeah, go for it. Uh, which version of Cintiq do you use slash recommend? 
Um, I use the Wacom Cintiq 16 HD. Um, however, this is an item that I purchased for myself after a lot of years of doing digital art. It is not something that is 100% necessary for you to have. Um, I will never advocate for you spending tons of money in order to become a good artist. Um, you can use a lot of different products. Um, the pricier items like the Cintiq where you can draw right on the screen are really great, but it's not necessary in order to be successful. Um, I have only really used um, Wacom products. Uh, so I can't really suggest um, other like, things other than that because I haven't tried it myself. Um, but the uh, Wacom Intuos Pro is really good. Um, all ex aside from this uh, Cintiq, every single design tablet, a digital art tablet I've ever owned has been secondhand. I bought them from other people. I bought them on Craigslist. I bought them on eBay. I found somebody else who would sell me a used one for cheap because save that money y'all. Um, and save from what money. I can tell, they're pretty sturdy because I was buying secondhand these tablets that were not, they were not new. They weren't even the previous seasons model. Like they're just old tablets. Um, and I, I've been very pleased with my Wacom products. Um, so I recommend Wacom, but, um, don't break the bank spending tons of money on expensive tools because expensive tools don't make you a better artist. They make creating art more convenient. What makes you a better artist is, um, following that passion, putting in the time, making time to practice every day and, and, and put an effort into your skill and your trade. Um, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. Um, I think especially, I mean, that's, it's pretty true for most disciplines too, right? Like if you're doing photography, videography, you know, don't let the equipment be an excuse to not do it. Right. Yeah. So definitely start doing it with the tools that you have. And the cool thing about these things is the more you do it, the more you can make educated decisions on what gear to buy. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself brushing a lot or your pen or you feel like your hand just needs something a little more ergonomic, then you can be able to justify buying Cintiq. Like Val said, you could do it secondhand and save even more money. Yep. Um, and I think I, I fell into that trap um, for a while. Um, and that was like, I did it not even just with um, art tools and stuff. Um, I did it when I first started streaming. Um, I, I thought that if I was going to be a streamer that I needed to have like this crazy setup. I needed to have like the, the trendy influencer setup with the lights and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff is cool. And I have, I have those things now. Um, but I don't, I don't think that you need to spend a ton of money to be a digital artist, to be an online content creator and all this stuff right off the bat, right when you get started, what you should do is save your money. So you have money to fund that creative passion that you have and all of those fancy things that you want, that you aspire to have, like the people you admire who are doing this job, that stuff comes uh, along the way. You know, it comes over time as you start to become more successful, as you build your brand and everything. Um, so don't do what I did and worry that uh, if you don't have them, then you are somehow worth less. You know, right. it's, it's simply not true. Yeah, I have buddies that are trying to get into photo and video. And they buy all the fancy gear and video and photo gear is not cheap, people. It's not. And then they just find out that they don't even want to do it. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Dude, what do you, you just bought so much gear and like, you know, like I said, make sure you want to do it first and fall in love with it first and then you can justify the process. Yeah. Um, all right. Looking at the chat. This is pretty funny. Where do you go? Steven, uh, Wacoms are solid. If there's a nuclear war, all that will be left are Wacom tablets and cockroaches. <laughs> That's Great. pretty good, my friend. Uh, you might not be wrong. You might not be wrong about that. You might not be wrong. Yeah. Uh, and then They're Becca, who asked you about the Wacom, says that she's got the exact same one. Oh, nice. So, awesome. Twinsies. Cool beans, Becca. Um, Becca's asking, um, what about spending money on art classes, tutorials instead? Um, I think that that would be a great place to divert the money you might have spent on wildly expensive items. Um, and that's the thing is that like, 
you can have the world's greatest camera um, and you can have like all of these things that make your setup look super cool and make you look cool in front of people and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't have the knowledge to convey the the art that you're trying to make, if you haven't honed that skill and put in um, that that practice and all that stuff, it's like, what are what are you recording with all of these expensive things? So taking that money that you might have put into making yourself look super cool and putting it into something that can give you the knowledge and the skills necessary to design super cool so that you can make money to buy things that make you look super cool is a better route oh yeah it's a way better route way better route um all right what are we doing here i just saw you do some very cool trick with clipping these little wi-fi wave things into it so i'm designing like the designs that are on the side of the wayfinder and i just like made like a little you know half circle drawing and then i duplicated them and spread them out so it kind of looks like an echo design here i'm not going to be super accurate with exactly what um the wayfinder designs look like i'm just going to put some cool stuff on here but um if i pull up like a picture of the wayfinder um there's some there's some interesting designs like this is just a like a google here you can see it's got you know this i think the the actual wayfinder has like these points on the corners and stuff but i'm not really worried about it i, I like it. you know you oh, you can't? bring it up no. yeah i did still seeing photoshop it not? there it is there you go okay now. i i didn't release the um the window i still was holding the click on there oh, but yeah you cool. can yeah. you can see it 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 has there's some differences between the way i've illustrated it and the way that it mm -hmm. appears in the movie but i'm just kind of going with my own way here and it's got these cool designs and i think yeah, that yeah i can just kind of kind of do my own thing i think that anybody that knows what the wayfinder is when they see this illustration they're going to be like oh that's the wayfinder so i i feel like yeah, i'll be i'll cool. be good <laughs> And I did see you rasterize that. Why did you rasterize those lines? I rasterized it because I accidentally made it a smart object when I meant to make it a group. I was just going to group it and then um, I was going to flatten it um, and I made it a smart object by accident. So I just rasterized it. I was just trying because uh, some of them were clipped and some of them were not. And when some layers are clipped, and some not. Sometimes you can't um, flatten a bunch of regular layers to it with those um, clipping masks in the stack. So I just was trying to group them all together so I could just flatten it because um, I didn't really need for it to be uh, organized the way it was organized. Um, and I kind of ran into a hiccup there, but uh, I fixed it. Fixed um, it. Yeah, uh, and I didn't want to make it a smart object because I wanted to still be able to to paint and I didn't want to be rasterizing and converting to smart object or clicking into my smart objects and editing them that way. I, I want to just stay here and while I'm still in this drawing phase, um, I'm not worried about like I'll I'll make uh, uh, smart objects towards the end when I know I'm not going to change something. Um, all right, what else do we have? We have more circles. Uh, so let's just draw a circle here. And then I, there we go. And let's go ahead and make an, oops, oops. I want to actually do that on a separate layer. Brendan says his AP art students are enjoying watching your technique, Val. Oh, no That's way. That's pretty cool. We got some AP art students in the house. Welcome. Welcome in. Um, I'm super curious uh, where, like, which, which school this is and what are you guys uh, working on in your in your class, if you, if you don't mind revealing that information. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, curious. Brennan, let us know. Are you in session right now showing your students this? If yeah. so, hi, all. Yes, hello everybody. Welcome to the stream. Happy May the 4th and May the 4th be with Happy you. Happy May the 4th. Yes. Uh, well, I how this has become the unofficial holiday. Yes, it has. <laughs> yeah, it it's like it's has. not like officially recognized, but I mean. But it it's is. Just, it's, I mean, yeah. Like everybody pretty much knows it's May the 4th these days. Yep. So, and even um, so, cool story my partner, who has never seen a Star Wars movie, which is crazy, uh, the new Obi Wan show is coming out. And I was like, hey, we got to get you prepared. Get you up to speed. Yeah. Because we're going to be watching this at midnight when they release. So we've watched 
nine movies within like the span of two weeks and she actually really really enjoys them amazing which is awesome yeah i love it she she's a big fan of the prequels which okay i'm not gonna throw any shade on because i grew up on those and you know it's actually very cool watching them very nostalgic i haven't seen them in years hey they gave us uh, darth maul she, you know they gave she us really liked cool the phantom stuff. menace and i'm okay. like oh word oh word and then revenge of the sith <laughs> okay i was like i was like word okay well, I'm glad that she is into Star Wars and that she's been watching Star Wars um, and that you guys are doing a marathon because that's how it should be. Um, that's that's what everybody should be doing right now. Um, and I approve. Um, I hope that there are some nerds uh, in the APR class. Uh, shout out to my nerds. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, Brendan just responded, actually. Uh, they're saying we're in northern LA County. They're working on some random digital illustrations. Okay, oh, cool. cool, cool beans. I like um, it. Like, well, I... thanks for tuning in, Brendan, and having your class tune in with us. Yeah, I used I used to live in Culver City, um, so I, I think I know the uh, the area. I've been those are some of my old stomping grounds down there. Um, nice. All right, so I've got some little designs. I'm just gonna put some little circles because um, I don't want to take too much time. How much time do we have? We still have like. Uh, we got about an hour and oh, we got a little more than an hour. Okay, all right. Um, Sai is asking, how do you do diagonal lines with the brush? I only know how to do horizontal and vertical lines. So you the chat actually can, that. yeah, that's a great question. So you can hold shift and you can draw a line straight. Oops. You can draw a line straight across. You can also hold shift and you can draw a line down. Um, but earlier I was like going through and drawing all of these um, other lines uh, by holding shift and tapping. So if I tap here and then I tap over there, um, as cool. long as I'm still holding the shift key down, it will um, it will draw a straight line. Um, so I could tap here and I could tap here and I could continue to tap. And as long as I'm still uh holding down shift uh, it'll continue to make straight lines for me um from the taps uh, it also if you were using a brush that has like um pressure sensitivity and opacity settings changed on it the um weight of the line that you create when you do these taps will also be dictated by how hard you tap um so keep that in mind if you do this and um you're like why why are these uh why are these lines showing up where they're like like maybe i can actually show you um let me grab like uh what's a good one i'll just do like the this one. um so if i tap like very lightly and then i hold shift and i tap hard you can see oh wow it Check does that, that. yeah it, like tapers in yes so or if i press if i tap really hard and then i hold shift and i tap really light oh well maybe uh -huh. not uh, but you can see what i mean like depending on yeah, the, cool. the difference there but if you want to tap um sometimes if, if it does that is i just like go over it a few times or sometimes it doesn't matter because i'm making a sketch but keep that in mind if you are using a brush with pressure sensitivity um that it will do that but i'm using um this blanco brush that is like at 100 percent opacity um in the brush settings itself so i never have um that problem um it just gives me a straight line uh and i prefer cool. to use it for stuff like this um all right where are we at with the sith wayfinder so I am adding um, just some little dots and things because that's one of the things that it has. And it's got like these little, it just kind of looks like just space map-ish kind of things is kind of the deal here. Um, I think is that's the, that's the plan, that's the gig is we're just making like little circles and dots. If you folks want to um, look up the Sith Wayfinder um, so that you can examine an image of it yourselves, feel free and I think you'll see that that's you know there's a lot of this sort of stuff like little lines little dots little you know almost like points of interest and coordinate type type things um on the surface of it so i'm just kind of doing that um just add in some little things i'm peeking over at my uh at my reference because i've got my google window open where i've just googled the wayfinder um and i'm doing not exactly what uh, the Wayfinder looks like, but my own rendition, because it is a highly detailed object, and I don't want to spend all day 
making it photo real and like movie accurate, which is a weird thing for a Star Wars fan to say. That I, that I don't we care about, about making this. it movie accurate. Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about this. Um, but uh, it's not really necessary. And like I said earlier, I think I if you look at this and you're familiar with the Wayfinder, you'd be like, oh, that's the Wayfinder. Yeah, I think the goal is, is someone can look at that and is pretty familiar with the Star Wars props. They'll be like, oh yeah, it's a Wayfinder. And yeah. boom, mission accomplished. Works for me. Um, I'm not picky today. Which is also a weird thing for a Star Wars fans to say. I'm not <laughs> what is happening? About Star Wars today. I don't know, man. It's getting I never crazy. thought I'd heard those words come out of Val's mouth. I'm not picky about Star Wars. <laughs> I'm not being picky about Star Wars. Says today. It's not Emperor that big a deal. Val Valpatine. Yes, Sith Lord Valpatine at your service, except not. Um, I guess <laughs> Sith Lords don't do what people tell them unless it's the guy that taught them how to be a Sith Lord, um, and that's not you, Paco. That's not you. It's not me. That's not you. Um, I'm going to kind of peek at the chat too a little bit. I haven't uh, looked um, at it in a while. Any specific reason to use Photoshop here instead of Illustrator? Um, I see this question a lot uh, in the chat when I'm moderating um, for Adobe Live is people asking why use Photoshop over Illustrator or Illustrator over Photoshop. And there's a lot of reasons why people would make the choice. But honestly, I think it comes down to I just like Photoshop. Um, I bet there's you know, uh, uh, dozens and dozens of ways that you could make exactly what I'm making um, in Illustrator. There's probably also dozens and dozens of ways that I could be making this that are different in Photoshop than the way that I'm doing it right now. But I am so comfortable in Photoshop. Things that a lot of people might use um, Illustrator for, I use Photoshop for it because I just, I just like it. Um, it's my favorite Adobe app. Um, it's been my bread and butter for many, many years. I'm super comfortable using it. Um, so I chose it and I figured out a way to do it in Photoshop rather than jumping into a program I'm less comfortable with. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree hundred percent with all that. Uh, just, you know, if you know how to use an app and you can get the job done with an app, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Uh, you know, for me, I, I come from the video world and I remember things that I should be doing in Photoshop. I was actually doing an After Effects because I know wow. After Effects so well. You know, like masking things out with the pen tool. I just know how to drive that better than in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I do think some apps are shine better doing certain things better than others. And that's where it might make sense to jump onto the other one. Mm -hmm. But if you can get the job done in the app that you speak uh, pretty fluent with, then go for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, right here, I'm going to um, illustrate some little like nicks and cuts and scrapes uh in the edge of this like i'm just gonna put like some little tiny details and i'm gonna try not to focus too much on it because i do want to get into the other couple of things that we're gonna do today but i want to make this a little bit gritty i'm gonna hit it with um some blend modes um just to kind of uh make the because one thing that my wayfinder does not have that the movie wayfinder has is um it has other colors than just like green and and silver on it there's uh a lot of like um varying hues of green and there's even some like murky red and stuff in there and i do want to give it like that little extra bit of detail um so we're gonna we're gonna test that out pretty soon um, but for now, I'm just going to give it these weird little details, just kind of using values to um, suggest, like give it the illusion that there's like little pieces cut out of the of the metal. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, it looks good. The imperfections give it more authenticity. Yeah, just look like it's sweatered. Yeah, it's, it's seen been some through. stuff. Been through some heck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, Anthony so. saying sketching my first Star Wars character the clothing in the universe is very interesting light what? and dark side I agree very good uh, costume design dark what is that Anthony what are you sketching yeah the uh dark side uh, people ask me a lot how come you only like the bad guys um the bad guys are just cooler they're just way cooler um and they're way better dressed way better dressed uh if I have to choose to like live with superpowers in space. I'm not gonna choose to wear a terry cloth bathrobe. 
and walk around in the desert the whole time. That's not what I'm. That's not what yeah, I'm. The bathroom do. in the desert. Smart. I'm, yeah, I'm but not, not going to be black in the Obi-Wan. desert. Listen, Darth Maul better? looked cool though, didn't he? When he got out of that he ship and cool. he was like, "Yo, what's up?" And he pulled his hood down, and With I was like, "Who down, is this yeah. man? Who is this? <laughs> he looks awesome." You? Um, you know, sometimes sometimes we suffer for fashion. Okay. Um, but well, there's a quote right there, ladies and gents. Yeah. Sometimes we suffer for fashion. We do. And that Darth Maul truth. looked awesome that whole time. I'm sure he wanted to get home and get a nice glass of ice water. Um, <laughs> but he sure looked excellent. Um, and yeah, he's like chugging the water and he's probably like, did I look good? All right, yeah, cool. Did I look great? All right. That's all that excellent. matters. Excellent. <laughs> um, Yes, they're but the yeah the bad guys in Star Wars are way better dressed. They're so much cooler. Um, I don't even think I like the 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 smugglers' uh, outfits more than I like uh, the the Sith stuff. It's just cool. It's just super cool. Um, and as a as an artist and illustrator, I find that like I look at those outfits and I just want to I just want to paint them. I just want to design something like them. You know, it's just really neat. Very inspiring to me. Um, so yeah. I choose the big, scary, planetary, destroying bad guys because their hats are cool. <laughs> their hats are said. cool. That's what I just said. <laughs> I like Galactus. Yeah. Uh, some cool comments from the chat. Mervin is saying, Val, you've always been an inspiration with your work. Aww, Very nice. Thank you. And then Odari says, next year I know to take off work for this. Yeah, I think someone earlier in the chat said everybody should have May the Fourth off, and I yes. agree. Yeah, That'll I agree. Nice. All right, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave that. I'm just gonna like do a little bit of um, like a point here, just so there's like a kind of a design to show this point, like it's engraved. And then I think I'm gonna do the blending modes, and then we're gonna get into the other designs because I don't wanna. I, I want to at least if I don't if I don't finish everything like all of the illustrations we do have tomorrow but if I don't finish all of the illustrations today I at least want to kind of dive into all three of them um, just so we can look at all the cool stuff I have planned. Uh, yeah. So I'll leave I'll leave that uh, like design wise cool. that's good and yeah then we'll it looks great let's hit it with some blending modes just to give it some some extra color uh, let's. Let's group that. Um, I'm going to change this background uh, to like a dark color because I want to make this. I want to make this glowy. Um, I'm going to grab my handy dandy um, soft round brush um, in the sea of ridiculous brushes that I have here. Turn that to dissolve. I'll grab some black um, and I'm just going to yeah oh uh also so i just tried to use the bracket keys to make my brush smaller and larger and it was not working and it was because i had the little thing selected here like you can see i just selected dissolve and there's a subtle blue outline there so i couldn't use oh, any of okay. my other hotkeys so if you're ever trying to use a hotkey and you don't know why it's not working check to make sure that this brush mode isn't highlighted that your um, blending mode over here isn't highlighted those are typically the things that trip me up where i'm like why is it broken and you it's just not click out then yeah it works. exactly cool. um so i'm just gonna add a little bit of dark atmosphere there um and I might add a little bit in the corner and then I will maybe uh, some green, like some very subtle green. Yeah, it's looking great. Yeah. Just that to... backdrop's really adding a lot to it. Yeah, just kind of give it a little bit of atmosphere. And yeah, then I agree. The, uh, the blending modes, I promise. So I'm going to, we'll convert this to smart object now. So that's a smart object. Smart. He's smart. Wicked smart. Smart. Um, <laughs> um, so we'll do that. Then I will um, make this a clipping mask, create clipping mask. And I'm just going to paint bucket in um, like a weird color, like it's just a strange color. Uh, and I'm going to flip through my blending modes um, and see if I find something that I sort of like. Uh, and also I'm using the, the arrow keys. 
um, by the way, because um, I have this. Remember, I said that this highlights right. and selects. I left it selected, and I'm using the up and down arrow keys. Um, Do you are you holding shift with the up and down arrow keys, or just up and down arrow keys? Just the up and down arrow keys. Okay, cool. Um, I kind of not really interacting the way I want, but I did choose a weird color, if you remember. So what I'm going to do is now that I have this, I'll leave it on overlay. I'm going to control or command U and open my hue and saturation. And I'm just going to do some weird wigglies here. I might bring it into like this super bright st strangeness, um, like right there. Um, and then I'm going to mask it and I am going to come in with my brush like a sharp brush um and i'm going to remove uh some portions of it and this is you know there's a there's a lot more accurate ways to kind of do some of this but this is the easiest way for me is just to remove parts of this stuff um in this way uh with my with my masks um and i did it kind of harshly and then i'll come back with my um soft round brush and kind of blend it out. Um, just so that there's like a brightness kind of shining and it doesn't really look super green, but we're going to add another layer. So now we have like this uh, strange, like poisonous green color coming through there. We'll make another layer and do kind of the same thing. We'll put that on a clipping mask. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually not going to paint bucket. I'm going to use my brush, uh, and I'm going to come in with like a weird bluish color. Maybe kind of like a, something like that. Uh, we'll get like a dark color. We'll throw that on overlay for now. Um, and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to, um, paint this. It's a little saturated, but I'm going to, um, just blot on just to change this color of the actual like outlined portion um and i will does that look good on overlay it kind of interacts oddly but maybe that's soft light all right i like Let's soft light some... yeah yeah and yeah. then um we'll i might do more of that like dark bluish because it just makes it look like it's not it's not like gray anymore and it has like a nice right. tint to it um, and i could come in and overlay like some textury some other textury things um but i think that this is good for now the last thing that we could do to it is grab our soft round brush again and maybe grab some of this color and make it brighter and then just uh kind of add a little bit of this glow so it's like it really breaks the borders of the item you know, yeah. so it's like shining out. Uh, and I think that looks pretty cool. So there's our wayfinder and I might, you know, kind of touch that up a little bit before we make something with it tomorrow. But I think this is good. I think that looks pretty, I agree. pretty legit. I think all these, all these little subtle adjustments you made with the background and the shading really, really definitely made it at a lot of depth. Thank you. I, I had what, a lot of fun doing it. About an hour. <laughs> she just knocked this out. Very, very cool. Speaking of time, we do have about an hour left. It's a little time check. Wayfinder, I have one thing that I do all the time is I I make um, a group and I title it that object or whatever I just painted, um, and then I'll add another layer because I'm like, oh, I should add something else to this. So I'll make a layer above that group and then I'll you know add something and then I'll just group it again and call it Wayfinder again. So there's probably like three. You look Wayfinder. There's probably another Wayfinder down here somewhere where I just keep naming the group Wayfinder over and over again. Wayfinder it's very one, confusing. Wayfinder V1, V2. Yep. Copy, copy, copy. I swear copy, this is Wayfinder the last copy. Wayfinder V3, final yeah, V1. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I okay. that's like an ongoing joke in our streams. Yes, 100%. It's, it it's is. a meme for sure. <laughs> super, super relatable. I feel like we've all been there. Um, okay, so now we have, let me flip. Oh, you know what? I want to um, flip my canvas. Uh, cause I just realized when I turned on the pro droid, my Viper pro droid words were reversed. Let's look at the wayfinder and, oh, it still looks good when I flipped it. It still, still looks nice. legit. Yeah. I just wanted to preview that and make sure it still looked neat, um, in the other orientation. So now we're going to do Viper pro droid and I have, um, like a, a more solid sketch for this one. And this is literally just ovals, lines and circles. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I could use shapes. I don't think I'm going to use shapes for the main uh, portion of the body, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like a hard round brush because we're going to do a Viper probe droid um, poster for tomorrow that is going to be I wanted to make it funny so I put like a note to myself here because the Viper probe droid has like these little like grabby hands so like in the diagram that looks super serious it's going to say stuff like grabby hand blinky oh, light yeah. like just funny stuff Love um it. yeah so I'm just going to um grab oh that's a painting with white I want to be painting with white I'm going to grab like a like a bluish gray and I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to draw in the shapes and kind of the same approach as we did uh, with the Wayfinder is I'm going to make these shapes um, and I'm going to paint them. But this is going to be a little bit different in that the pieces are much smaller and we're going to incorporate the shape tool just a little bit to, to be some, you know, precise in some places. Um, so I'm just going to draw a little bit of this, outline it, trying to speed through it without rushing, you know, just so we kind of get to everything today. Um, but in the meantime, how's everybody doing? How's everybody, what's everybody working on? What are you guys yeah, up let to? Let us know. I do have a trivia question I wanted to ask now that we brought the Viper droid, but let us know in the chat for all my Star Wars fans. When is the first time you saw a Viper droid in the movies? Hey. Or in the expanded universe? Are we talking? So, so I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a major nerd here. Yeah. Are we yeah, talking the first time it appears in the films oh. in like progression? Or are we talking about the first time it appears in the order that the movies actually released? Uh, in the order that the movies were actually released. Okay. All right. So I have a movie in mind. I'll be curious to know if I'm wrong, because Val, you might know more than me. I'm pretty sure I I'm pretty sure I remember the first time um, you see it. But yeah. I could be Same I could thing. be wrong though because I could be wrong too. I but yeah. I'll be curious to know if we have the same answer in mind. But I'll give it a couple of minutes. See if in, anybody in the chat knows. If not, we'll say our answer at the same time. Okay. Um. I because I think I I I think I know. But when I watch Star Wars, I'm not like waiting for the probe droid. I'm not like, oh yeah, he's here. <laughs> you know. So I don't. <laughs> I could have missed it at an earlier time. But I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I know. All right, looking at the chat, Brendan, um, who is the AP teacher, is saying, love the stipled texture on the Wayfinder. I push my students to explore texture in their work, but they are scared and stick to airbrush mode. Yeah, that's that's not that's not uncommon. That's how I was for for a long time. But um, I think that if I could offer your students um, uh, a word of advice, um, when you go forth into the world and you start uh, taking design jobs and everything, um, you might get lucky and get really well known for a very particular style and level of texture in your work. And people will only come to you for your style and your thing that you're doing. But chances are what you're going to have to do is what most of us do. And that is you have a style and you have um, a particular way that you do your work. But over the course of a creative career especially when you're building that career you've got to fill your batman utility belt full of a bunch of different skills and a bunch of different techniques and you're going to get clients that ask you for things that you don't really like to do and if you're especially if you're going like career with this you got to take jobs and you got to pay the bills you know um so if you're terrified of texture i think that you are only doing yourself a disservice by not just diving into it and getting it over with, even if you still don't like it after you practice and, and learn how to use more texture in your work. Because if you don't, you are still going to encounter someone in the future who's going to ask you for it. You know, the, the there's so many people out there who will eventually cross paths with you and ask you to do an art job. Um, and you're, you're not going to escape through your entire career with somebody not asking you for, for texture in a piece, um, whether you're doing graphic design or what, whatever it is you're doing, it's going to happen. Um, and the longer you put it off, the more difficult it's going to be to realize that you've got to take this job and you've got to do the job that's, that's before you and you have very little experience doing it. Um, and on a, on a lighter note though, uh, when you, 
use texture. Um, it's really not as bad as you think it's going to be. I used to not use texture ever. I was like, I just want to see something clean. I want it to be smooth. Um, and when I finally was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I realized that painting with texture or designing with texture, illustrating with texture is exactly the same as not doing it. You just kind of learn a, a slightly different technique, um, for applying it um and uh if i could be a little philosophical um you just uh learn to appreciate its differences to a to a cleaner design um and it's really not very different not very different at all so well said um, my friend do that because then you'll otherwise you'll end up like me where i was like i don't paint hands on my characters because that's my style because i don't want to paint hands <laughs> it's my style to draw all of my characters with their pockets in their hands or behind their back. Um, I That's my style. And then a client was like, hey, I have a job for you and you really need this job because you have to pay your rent. And I'm like, okay, yay, that's great. What do you want me to do? Uh, I want you to paint hands for me. <laughs> I've been not painting hands for seven years. <laughs> what do I do? Um, I had to expedite the learning of how to paint hands so that I could take the job that I really needed to take. And yeah. I regretted uh, putting it off for so many years. That's a great way to learn, honestly, when you have that <laughs> fire lit under your behind. Yes. I've had to do that before. It's like, hey, do motion graphics. I'm like, hey, I don't know how to do motion graphics, but I need money. Yeah. So just go Gotta through the weeds it. and do it. Um, all right, going back old... to... Oh, go for it. Yeah, going back to our question about the Viper droid. Mm -hmm. um, I did see some correct answers, which I think is right, but I'm curious to know if you and I, Val, have the same answer in mind. So on three, let's say the movie that we think it is. Ready? Okay. All right. One, two, three. A Empire Strikes Back. Really? Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think in Hoth, you see it for the first time. Wait, right? hold on. Let me, look, let me look, because I could be wrong. It could have been yeah. the different scary hovering droid. Yeah, um, that but... hovering droid, I think is not what i had in mind when I know leia's what you're in the about. cell leia, yeah. at the beginning is it the circular one and not the viper yeah, that's, droid? i think that's a new i think uh the one you're drawing is empire strikes back okay you so. you're you're right then because it's it's very it is very empire um but i couldn't remember if it was empire strikes back or if this was the same one um that came into the cell when leia was like I'm not giving you what I want. And he was yeah. like, aren't you my daughter? I mean, ah. <laughs> that whole movie, that whole movie, I was just like watching it again, like re cause I rewatched it. Oh no, you're right. You're, you're 100% right. Um, I was out Star Wars it. Val. She, he would have known. He did. It Who happens sometimes. Known that's possible. It happens sometimes. Um, but I, I was rewatching that movie, like with the context of like seeing all of Star Wars now. And it is so funny. It is a, it like, it's a serious movie. I get very emotional when I watch it. Uh, I get, I get choked up, but it's also hilarious to watch because the whole movie is number one, Luke is whining the whole time. He's very, he's, he's upset. He, you that, told me I like, can hang out with my friends this yeah, year. Yeah, it's like, we're supposed to go do something. And yeah, he's so yeah, whiny. Just, I, just I, when time. I reach out with my partner, I literally burst it out laughing. It's when so he said funny. that, I'm like, you're so angsty. Yeah, and he's totally not even, Luke. the thing is, he's, it's not even like, like, okay, this young guy, he, you know, he's coming into his own and he just wants these certain things. He is whining like a baby though. Like, nah, like he's just really not, yeah, you know, and then, and then, um, you have like Vader running around and he's very robotic, obviously, cause he's got no arms and legs. And I didn't know that, you know, when I watched it for the first time, but now I've seen all the prequels and everything. So he's got no arms and legs. Um, and he's, he's very, you know, mechanical and <laughs> he just walks into every room he goes into and he's like, I'm Vader, do what I tell you. And everyone's like. I've seen you choke people to death for disagreeing with you, but I shall disagree <laughs> still. <laughs> and then uh, Obi-Wan is like, yo, what are you doing running around in the desert? And uh, Luke's like, I'm looking for uh, some guy named Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan's like, I haven't heard that name since I cut Darth Vader's legs off and left him in a volcano. That's crazy. That's, it's been a while. <laughs> It's just all very like it's funny in hindsight the whole film it is it's hilarious yeah. it's just great 
Um, but yeah, you should you should you should watch it like you could watch it like a serious movie and you could watch it like a comedy and it's enjoyable either way. It's really great. <laughs> Uh, oh, they're saying the one from A New Hope is a probe droid. Yeah, it's it's so that's still what it's called. So yeah. this is the Viper probe droid. They're they're both probe droids. Um, uh, because if you look up Viper probe droid, probe you get droids. this one. Um, so I mean, I I just did like my right? pushes up glass. Excuse me, actually, this is the <laughs> well, Viper actually. probe droid. Mm, actually, <laughs> canonically, in the <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's you explaining to my know. partner what uh, canon meant. Cause she never heard of that before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know who's sick of hearing me explain what canon means? My mom. Your mom. mom. Actually, mom. Sick, sick of it. And, and we my were talking mom. talking about Viper Probe. Yeah. The Viper Probe droid. Thanks, mom. Uh, <laughs> my mom trolls me. She trolls me. You've met my mom, right? I, I'm pretty sure you've I think you've so. Met yeah. I think mom. she came to the studio back yeah. in the. Uh, in the days when we used to stream live in a studio. She, so my mother, my mother trolls me all the time. Cause my mom, she, she cares that I do art. She cares that I do good Star Wars art. But as far as Star Wars actually does not care. Does, okay. does not care at all. Does not care about lightsabers. Does not care about any of that stuff. And she cares less when I'm like, mom, so this new show came out about Star Wars. And like, it's really crazy because new stuff is coming into camp. Like I'd start talking about it because I'm excited. And my mom's like, no more. No. Um, sometimes she trolls me and she fakes me out. And she has this expression on her face. Like she's really interested in what I'm saying about Star Wars. I'm like, oh my God, I'm having the moment with my mom where we finally come <laughs> together about Star through. Wars. And she's like, wow, baby, that's really interesting. So remind me again, which which movie? So so in this movie, Kylo Ren does X, Y, and Z, but which movie is the one with Spock? Nice. And Got him. she gets me going. She gets me going every that's time. Good. I mean, she knows she knows enough to troll, right? I mean, you yeah, gotta give your mom some credit. She knows the differences with these two universes enough to to troll you. It breaks my heart though. It hurts me physically. Yeah, it's, that's it's pretty very, funny. I like your mom. Sad. I like her even more now. My mom likes you a lot too. She asked me. She, she asked me. So she. One thing that my mom does. So everybody in the chat knows is I. When I see my mom, I I talk to her about Adobe Live and I talk to her about you guys. And if we've had a good stream and you guys were telling jokes and stuff, I'm like, yeah, you know, today's stream was great. And sometimes I tell them about like the the joke steve makes or like great you know hosting from paco or whatever like i tell her about my everyday work and all that good stuff and um she asks about you guys uh a nice. lot yeah she asked me how the team is doing she asks me if anything interesting happened in chat she remember she asked me specifically about general kenobi she asked about you all general yeah. kenobi yes uh, it's it's kind of Kenobi's an unforgettable has become a name. meme in our chat. Yes, you are the resident, like a living meme um, in this community. Um, and my I mom has that. asked me on occasion, like, how's General Kenobi doing? So <laughs> she likes That's you awesome. guys a lot. <laughs> General Kenobi, how does it make you feel that Ma Val's mom knows about you? That's pretty Nickname cool. Mama Val. We do call her Mama Val. Yeah, Mama Val. Um, but yeah. So cool. My mom. All right, where we are with this Viper probe droid. Um, so I'm like, arms, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm putting joints in. I am not going to like, this is also, um, someone's going to push the glasses up at me and recite canon. I'm not, I'm not going to make the arms on this, uh, super accurate. I'm just not going to, um, cause that's a lot of work. I'm just going to, I'm putting all of these little dots here. These are going to end up being joints. Um, and I'm going to put some long lines, you know, from, from joint to joint and, and make some little grabby hands and do some, do all kinds of stuff. And that's going to be good enough for me. Um, I think that it's, uh, also, uh, I just remembered a cool trick if you're doing stuff like this that you should do is I just pressed V on my keyboard to select my move tool. And if I hold uh, Alt on my keyboard, I can just duplicate these as many times as I want and space them out. So um, if you are doing a lot of stuff with shapes like I'm doing right now, you don't have to actually control J or right click your um, layer and duplicate it. You can just hold Alt while on the move tool and 
just drag them out of each other, which is great. Um, nice. Yeah, I think that shortcut, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Transfers over to other apps too. Yeah. Um, I know in After Effects, it's the same thing. You can hit Alt on a shape and it'll do the same thing. And same thing with uh, Premiere Pro. You do like alt with clips and drag up it duplicates so it's cool how the a lot of these shortcuts have overlap so it's a little less intimidating mm -hmm. picking up a new app because there is a little bit of overlap within these apps and the way that the tools work yeah uh and it, it does like it's not it's not always the same because sometimes right. i try to do certain things in illustrator if i'm using illustrator and it's not yeah but for the most part there's a there's a lot a lot of similarities and you can always route your own hotkeys too, folks. That you, can you can always make edit. It customizable. Um, so I here I am um, making a little robot arm, and look how easy it is just to make something that looks like a robot arm. It's grabby just a hands. little yeah, little grabby hands. Here goes a grabby hand. Are you ready? It's it's about to get very uh, very cool in here. It's about to get super awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna make a. A little a little baby grabby hand. Oh wait, wait. There it is. There it is. Who says Val can't draw hands? Yeah, look at, look that. at that. That's a perfect hand. That is a perfect hand. <laughs> yeah. um, Literally perfect. So kids from the AP art class, if you practice drawing hands, you too can make a you masterpiece too can draw like hands. this. There it is. There oh my go. goodness, screenshot that. Yeah. I wanna I want this frame right on there. my wall. <laughs> Oh my God. Noted. Yeah, there we go. All right. So there's a little grabby hand. Uh, we're going to do like a longer, um, a longer deal here. Um, I swear I actually, like when I put my mind to it, I can draw a real hand. That's not, that's not what my hands look like, I swear. Um, there it is. That's what she has to draw for that client. Yeah, that's She's it. Like, oh my goodness. It's perfect. I'm going to need you to draw a grabby hands. Uh, that's all I'm looking for is just grabby hands. And I was like, that's, that's it. Just grabby hands. How am I going to, um, but I made it happen with the power of star Wars and anime. I made it happen. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Okay. Um, there. I'm just. I'm literally making this stuff up as I as I go. None of this. I'm kind of glancing over at my um, at my reference, but I'm just putting these weird little whatevers um, on this robot. Um, and as you can see, depending on what kind of style you're going for, it really doesn't, I don't, I really don't think it matters sometimes. I think, um, you can do what we were kind of talking yesterday. If anyone caught the, um, I hosted, uh, Jay Schuster yesterday and we were talking about like little greebly bits and pieces. Um, you don't really, sometimes you don't really have to have, um, like the perfect, details painted in sometimes you can you can just do little sketchy bits of stuff and if it looks like it's supposed to be a thing sometimes uh brains just fill it in as a thing and and that's that's it like that's all you know it doesn't have to be perfect you can just make it look like it's supposed to be a bunch of crazy stuff and sometimes that's enough for people's brains to be like that's the stuff she meant for it to look like. <laughs> that's the stuff I was thinking. Yeah, of. that's that's exactly the stuff I was hoping that's it would the stuff, be like. Yeah, my yeah. brain understands the stuff. There you go. Um, that's all you need. Um, cool. Okay, so we have made a Viper Pro Droid. I feel like I need a little bit more, the, like the spidery legs. I need more of them. I'm going to put another one back here. How much time do we have, Paco? Like, how are we doing we on the time? We have a little under an hour. I'd say about... Let me do some math here. 40 minutes. Okay, 40, 40 minutes? Oh, we're we're. I believe glorious. so. Yeah, we got 40 minutes. We're good. Um, I'm going to do some more legs. I'm thinking I'm I'm like running out of time here. Because um, no, we are going to do time. like a landscape We'll be painting. more like 30 with our, our wrap-up and all that jazz we got to do at the end. Okay. So about half an hour, I'd say. Cool beans. Um, let's do like a weird... Yeah, I like this. Oops. I don't know if I like that, but we're gonna. Good enough. It's, you know, because it's basically just like this weird robot with all these like little spider arms 
um, mm -hmm. that look really pointy and dangerous. Um, it is a very dangerous robot, let me tell you. Except for it's a little not. grabby hand. Someone mentioned that's a perfect hand for popcorn. It Maybe. is. That's what it's yeah. for. That's so what we draw a little for. popcorn kernel on it? We should definitely draw. We should draw. <laughs> I am taking suggestions for strange little items that we can put oh my in goodness, the, Chad, in the this grabby is hands. It. Yeah. I love these parts of the stream. You all can literally influence this illustration. So let us know something that would make somewhat sense to have on this robot. And then also um, things that don't then, make any sense. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, let's let's go off the rails here. Yeah. Uh, let us know what, what should be in these robots' little uh, grabby hands. And yeah, Val is taking items. suggestions. Serious items and troll items. She does let's hold go. the magic pen, so she could either take it or she could say, nah. But yeah. We'll read any suggestion. Let's see. I am the master of this realm, but I will give she you. She is the master of the realm. I will give you the consideration. She's accepting. Of me right. <laughs> yeah. She's accepting suggestions so graciously of her. Yes, but honestly, this is a Star Wars stream, and if we're gonna be uh, deciding, like, if I want to put like a little popcorn or an ice cream cone in this probe droid's hand, it's pro I'm probably gonna end up taking your suggestions. Oh, I love it's the fact that it could just hold like. An ice cream cone in one hand and a popcorn kernel in the other. Yeah, like, just this hanging thing out. He's just floating around on Hoth like, this is yeah. great, man. This is not that bad. I don't know what they were talking about. It's not that cold. <laughs> okay, let me merge all the ellipses. I, I could be um, naming my layers Whoa, here. Oh, Phil. It'd be good. It's going crazy here. Ton, ton, ton guts. I guess that's a <laughs> reference to that. <laughs> Yeah. This thing, all right, well, it went from being all nice with popcorn and ice cream to straight tauntaun goats. The straight so. craziness. Um, yeah. I blame Luke Skywalker for that. I That's true. Luke. I guess they're already out there, huh? Yeah. They're, all, they're yes. already out there. Sam says a teacup and a Cruella de Vil style cigarette holder. Yeah, yeah like this, the little... This probe the, goes the, just the, smoking a cigarette. The long ladyfinger, like, <laughs> holder. Yes. All right, a me, can I'm of WD-40. Yeah, <laughs> A cat pan sifter, a chef knife. Oh, this is great. I like the can of WD-40. That's killing me. <laughs> yeah. It's self-repairs. Yeah. All right. I'm going to throw the eyes on here, and then I will go through all of the suggestions and decide uh, which of you trolls is getting uh, an item added. Yeah. To we got Keita Jones side. in the chat. She's saying Jones. how to say what's up to Voodoo the Jedi. What's Good, I haven't up? Seen you in a while. Good to see ya. It's been a minute. Um, I'm also really not making um, this super accurate, and I feel like I'm gonna post this on the internet, and somebody somewhere is gonna be like, actually, the probe droid doesn't have that many eyes. Actually, a probe droid does not use a can of WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, man. You're right. My bad. My Actually, bad. Actually, it only eats buttered popcorn, <laughs> not caramel popcorn. You're joking, but people do this about Star Wars. People yeah, are sure they people do. People don't play. I used to be one of them until I was like, you know what? I'm too old for this. I can't. <laughs> I can't be getting mad. This I can't is be my getting design. mad over canning content on the internet. I gotta calm down. Um, yeah, I can't but, wait for that know. comment to actually. Uh, exist uh, a probe droid eating popcorn is not canon wow <laughs> just, really just need for it to be real life that's all i need is for it to be i need that comment to be canon i need it yes is what i want i'm gonna screenshot it okay there is our probe droid face uh we gotta do some little greebly weirdness on this too i feel like you know what i feel like is i need to pull some of these limbs down um but uh let me let me merge i'm gonna do a little bit of um layer organization real quick um i'm gonna merge all of these i think what is this that can go underneath here i don't know why that's above i'm gonna merge all of these ellipses just control just selecting them all in control e um and i'm gonna call these eyes so i know what that is i'm gonna call this uh body so i know what that is um that's that weird ellipse where's all the other ellipses there they are we're gonna bring this ellipse down here we're gonna merge that and is that all of them no that's not all of them um but we'll leave those this is the 
I'm just gonna call this middle because I'll know what that means. Is it's just like the middle bits in the background. If I can spell middle right, we'll get through this, folks. We'll do it. Um, I'm gonna delete this. What is this? Oh, those are the other ellipses. We have some more suggestions coming in. All Clever right. Clever is recommending a little purse with daisy flowers. Very cute. Okay. We could totally uh, give Wade. him like in the grabby hand. Just a little grabby little hand. Purse. Just a little. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. Yes. One hundred percent. That's uh, happening. Wade is suggesting. Can we get a BB-8 style sippy cup to wash down the popcorn? Hey, you gotta you know have something what? to wash down the popcorn. I was actually thinking about putting like, you know, people put stickers on like their laptops or their guitar case or whatever. Yeah. I was thinking about like slapping some stickers on him. Cause we can do whatever we want with this we can. design. That's, so it's I was actually thinking about putting very a BB-8 sticker yes, <laughs> on the side. Let's do it. That's fitting to what Rob suggested. It could be a sticker instead of a tattoo, but they're at, they're suggesting he should have had a tattoo that says mom was a dishwasher. <laughs> Yes, That's or just great. like one of the mom things, and then it has like a dishwasher heart, in the heart with a thing. Well, <laughs> I don't know if people would know that that's what that was, but we could put we could put like it's a bumper sticker canon. on him. Mom was a dishwasher. It is canon now. It's canon now. Oh, that's great. I love it. You guys' that ideas are great. great. We're gonna use so many of these, and they're gonna be glorious. Okay, I am going to put another eyeball just back here. Um, just kind of off the side so that it, it kind of gives the illusion that there's other things like off the edge, like going around. Oh, uh, nice. The head, I like it. You know, so yeah. just, just a little bit of depth. Because this is like more of a graphical kind of approach to something like this, but I do want to kind of show that there is more stuff happening. Um, here and i also want to i'm gonna add another maybe i won't maybe i'll put that in later um i'm also i'm sorry i'm also kind of like talking to myself as i go along and like mentioning things i may or may not do and then not explaining myself because <laughs> i do that i talk i'm like hmm, maybe i'll do this and then it dawns on me that i'm streaming and people might be listening to me and waiting for me to finish that idea and sentence Where's the sock going yeah all, i mean this is why this is adobe live though right we're seeing the true authenticity of design this is true this is true i talked to myself real, a lot yeah this is real design here folks okay. um let's see gareth is suggesting a sticker saying i've been to the hottest place in the galaxy hottest place nice in the galaxy. it'd be cool if we have you know how um like say paratroopers in world war ii every time they would go somewhere they get a special badge yeah. so maybe they get like a hoth badge yes. saying they were there for the battle of hoth that's i love cool. it we could do we could do some little some little sticker badges or maybe like we could have like some little actual like welded badges like along yeah. the top here that could be cool um i'm gonna come in now uh and i am going to do some uh some designing here as far as like the little little greebly like things just kind of adding to the mechanical nature of the illustration just to kind of throw some stuff in here start making it look like a robot uh and not a floating pie with arms a floating pie with grabby it's arms kind of a weird pie right now with really sharp aggressive looking legs um <laughs> but i'm gonna gonna do that i'm gonna throw some just some little sketches around of light shadow i'm gonna come in with a clipping mask later um and kind of add a little bit of the shadow i'm gonna use the I, i'm really fond of using the soft round brush with the um the dissolve on it and i i didn't i never thought like i would i would that would be something that i would really enjoy but it is so nice just to be able to do that and i found that when i'm doing a stream or i'm working on a project i need to send a concept to a client or something and i need to like detail something quickly and accurately but i'm doing like a tiny sketch with like um simple shapes or something it works it's just like a nice little texture so it doesn't look flat when I'm doing it and it's also really enjoyable like it's very satisfying doing that uh illustration style with the 
the noise brush shading. Like it's it's a it's the a noise good time. Brush. I like the noise brush. Yeah. The noise brush, exactly. The noise it brush. It is a noise brush. It creates noise. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. There's a that little... did a lot just setting that little line. Yeah, just kind of yeah. make it look like it's got pieces and then I'm gonna put another tiny one here. So it just has, yeah, just kind of give it that, you know, like it's, it's it would rotate, you know, it's got little pieces. I'm also gonna do, um, a little bit of this and what i'm gonna do too is i'm gonna come in afterward and i'm gonna kind of um uh alter the silhouette so i have like these little breaks and stuff so i'll come in later with the mask and um kind of cut away the like a little lip there so that it looks like it kind of dips in you know just okay. to add a little more yeah. something um i will i will be able to demonstrate that to you um, so maybe, and honestly, maybe if we can do it. If I just, uh, I mask just to show you an idea, I would come in after. So I put like this little lip on the top of the head. And then if I mask that out, see that? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So then it just looks like the, it's a piece that fits in right. and it's really not a lot of work just to do that. But these tiny, teeny little detail um techniques they do kind of give this air that this is not a flat image of a robot this is a mechanical item that has pieces um that fit in together and you know create a whatever this is a probe droid viper probe droid um and all that good stuff so um this is not really like super even. I don't think it matters. I think the nature of our style with our illustration today is such that we don't really need to, we're, we're doing hard surface design without having to be precise, which is my favorite thing. Um, Cause if I can get away with not having to be precise when it comes to robots and spaceships and stuff, I will take that opportunity. Um, because I'm also adding, um, one thing that I thought would really kind of improve this is if I came around the edges here and added these little humps, um, and what I'm going to do is this is another similar to cutting out these little pieces. So I just added like that little hump up here. Um, and what I'm going to do is if I make a new layer and turn that into a clipping mask and I grab my handy dandy um, soft round brush and put that on dissolve. Doo -doo -doo. So I added this little hump right here. Where is uh, my brush? I added that little hump. Um, right there. And the reason why I did that is because I want to make it look like this eyeball, um, or maybe it's a light or camera, um, is coming out of this head shape. So now I can come in uh, and I can Ooh, add... is that the noise brush? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I can add uh, this texture here, and then I'm also going to come in um, with a eraser brush, and I'm going to erase and make that um, kind of uh sharp there just to give it a lip um but i've added that that lip there so what it kind of does is it makes it look like there is um uh, some kind of protrusion on the droid itself that houses that eyeball if that makes sense you know yeah. so it's not just the eyes not just floating in space like sort of on top of it like it is there there it comes out of a socket on the actual droid um and you can do that just with a simple little stroke adding another little piece there to it and then shading it um and i can do the same thing over here i added those little humps right there um and i will take uh this dark brush and I will kind of brush upward and then I'll grab um, that light color and I will um, brush that away and I am going to grab my eraser and I'll just kind of erase this and just put like a clear distinction between those two um, places there uh, and I will erase also 
from here just to kind of bring my lines back. And so it just kind of adds a little something, something. I could even turn that fill down a little bit um, so that it's not super crazy, but that's kind of how we'll eventually start really bringing out the, the details of this. That's how I like to illustrate. And you can see when I zoom out, um, I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna press F and go into this third view of Photoshop so we can just see the art. When I zoom out, it, it adds a tiny bit of depth yeah. over there that wasn't really that difficult to do. I think the only really big obstacle illustrating this way and um, kind of rendering and bringing things into a 3D space in this way is being able to visualize it, right? Is um, uh, you can take any flat object and if you shade it just right, you can make it look like it's popping out, but you'll have trouble if you don't know how to visualize it coming into 3D space, this is something I struggle with every day, even now. Um, and all you need to do is just practice it, learn how to do it, and then stay in practice. Um, yeah. Just grab some shapes the way I practice this sort of thing. Like when I kind of fall out of practice or I feel like I'm not doing a good job, um, I literally do this. I will um, grab a shape, a circle, and I will drag out a circle and I will, um, let me just rasterize this. Um, and I will launch What does that do, rasterizing? So um, you? when you are working with a smart object or in this case, like I'm working with a live shape, um, rasterizing it just turns it into a pixel layer so that I can paint on it. I can erase from it and all that kind of stuff. I can't do that with a live shape or unless a smart rasterize. object unless okay. I rasterize it, yeah. Um, but I will do this. I will lock transparency. I will grab that brush. Um, it's even more fun with the dissolve brush. Um, and I will practice bringing a flat shape into 3D space by doing something like this. Just, okay, um, imagining a light source. Imagine that this is, you know, in shadow over here, maybe grabbing a lighter color and bringing this lighter color here. And just practice. If you take something flat, can you make that flat thing appear um, as if it is no longer flat. And when you do that with simple shapes um, and then you master how to do that with simple shapes, the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. And then the more you can do it with more intricate designs. So if you've been you know, practicing for days and days, weeks or weeks, you know, bringing a sphere, tr transforming a circle into a sphere, um, once you get comfortable enough with doing that, that you don't feel like you have to struggle to do it, then maybe you try it with um, a different shape, something that's a little more detailed, and then you get more detailed and more detailed. But, you know, just just do that little practice. Um, try some other that's shapes. Awesome. Try yeah. some, uh, some squares, pyramids, whatever. I was hoping our AP friend would chime in. Uh, Brandon says, love the dissolve brush suggestion, forcing my students to try it. And as you can see, I mean, that, that simple shape layer you did within the course of like a minute, two minutes, you gave it the illusion of 3D just by doing like three or four different uh, colored brush strokes. So yeah, it always looks so cool in design and it's so easy. I mean, now even I'm inspired. I'm like, shoot, I might try some of this when I'm doing do some it. motion graphic design now. Do it. So, very it, cool. It, it Thanks for really taking the time easy. to show us that. That was very uh, not intimidating. Uh, my pleasure. I think um, if I can, folks, I will try to teach you how to do a thing I struggled doing when I first started doing art in the easiest way possible. Because when I first started doing digital work, I made things so difficult for myself. Seriously, I was I was so hard on myself and I'm, I made extra work for myself. Um, and I fell into the trap, which I try to warn you folks away from all the time is looking at the portfolios of people you admire and assuming they go from point A to point B, you know, and create that final product perfectly with no mistakes. I thought that like, if I was making my state mistakes in my workflow that I was never going to be a professional and I was doing everything the long way, the hard way, work smart, not hard folks. And if I can show you how to do something that I hated doing and struggled with um, at the beginning of my career in a, in a manner which you can um, accomplish in like four or five minutes, I will do it <laughs> to save you the trouble. Love it. And then he's saying they have to go now. Thanks for bringing you into the fandom of Star Wars. I think that's a W here, Val. 
we got somebody to like Star Wars. Wow. So wow. we'll take it. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, for, for stopping in and, and hanging out. It's been a blast. Um, how much time do I have left, by the way? You have, wow, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, we got 15 minutes. Okay. I don't think we're going to um, get to the landscape, but I mean, I've already, like, let me, um, I'm going to group all of this stuff. Um, I have done like a sketch of it so you can kind of see. So maybe we'll, we'll touch on that real quick. I'm going to call this um, Viper Pro Droid. Um, and hide that. And if I pull up, you can kind of see, like I've, I've kind of done a little bit of it. Let me put a background. I just realized I don't I love this, a, by the way. Background. I'm a sucker for like old school travel posters. Yeah. Um, and I actually do that with my photography. It's kind of like a, a fun little project I started. So the fact that we're getting to do this in Star Wars, pretty cool. I've had I've, I've had a lot of time and I, I don't know if somebody has done this already and it's possible, but I was trying to think of like, you know, it always says greetings from and then yeah. the place, and then there's like a little tagline. Double the sun, I, double the fun. Yeah, double the sun, oh, double the fun. Thought it would That's be cool. So good. And then like these scribbles um, right here are gonna be um, like uh, a herd of tauntauns, or not tauntauns, um, <laughs> a herd of, uh, I have a, am bantha? I no. The bantha, yeah, like a little bantha herd. Bantha herd. That's just, so there's be a big one that's kind of like, overlapping the word and then you know they kind of spread out into the distance um over here and um i will have like moisture towers and like the little you know um huts and homes and things and um the binary sunset obviously um and so we'll do that um it's not i'm showing you the the sketch for it it doesn't take too much to do so i think what i might do is um I might just save this one and we'll we'll do the illustration of the landscape um at the beginning of the stream tomorrow and then we'll get into the graphic design with all of the elements that we've illustrated today um because the beautiful thing about painting a landscape for one of these classic um postcards is that like the core portions of this painting that would be difficult to do and be time consuming are covered up by the words and you put something different in the text right so the the hardest parts of the painting are going to be covered and i just have to put like some texture maybe some you know like the sun and maybe some weird desert buzzards or something you know in the word i could do that pretty quick um so i will not uh do this whole portion of the project without you and then martha stewart you tomorrow i'll i'll do it on martha the stewart it's just like the best way to describe it's it true, though right yeah yeah i mean <laughs> oh wait and it's done yeah so you want to just mix this all up put it in the pie tin <laughs> and, put it in the, and then Here it is. in two hours this is what you'll have good luck <laughs> <laughs> that's great cool i'm excited about the tatooine one tomorrow that'll be fun yeah, so we're gonna we'll do. Um, so we'll finish this the, one up within the next um, twelve-ish minutes. Yeah, we'll I'm gonna get to a good um, stopping point. Yeah, just just a yeah. good stopping point. I'll I will um, uh, definitely we're gonna be we're gonna be re revisiting everything tomorrow. So I'll definitely like clean some things up um, using the same techniques that I was, you know creating it with today in between now and tomorrow, but we're going to pull it up because I'm just doing the illustrations for today. So tomorrow we'll take it and we'll start adding all of the um, ideas that you um, folks kind of put into the chat today, um, making our little poster diagram. Um, and then we will do the, so the wayfinder is going to be like a Instagram post, you know, how Ooh. people have like a, subject or point of interest that's like for sale and then they have like all these big you know like your standard promo post so i'm going to do like an instagram sale post for the wayfinder <laughs> and it's going to okay. be like so the wayfinder you know now on sale and then in the corner it just says he gonna find you no seriously he actually will <laughs> that's awesome so I think it's going to be fun. So postcard, yeah, I'm poster, excited to see and that. post. Yeah, if you're not following Val on Instagram, friends, make sure you are so you can see these 
uh, designs and illustrations finalized. Cause you're yeah. pretty good about posting final designs on your social, right? Um, Usually Instagram. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave I'm it as sure. Well, yes. okay. I guess let I me will, rephrase that question. This, this will be, this one will be on Instagram, right? Yes, this one will okay. 100% so you be on You want to see this Instagram. one on Instagram, make sure you follow her. And, and maybe I can explain myself. Um, so, and this is, I feel like maybe people can relate to this. Sometimes I do stuff on stream and um, I feel like I didn't do a good enough job. And so I second guessed the quality of my work and I don't always get around to actually posting it because I feel like I need to spend more time on it. Does anybody else feel like that? Like I just, just in yeah, case 100%. you do, I want you to know that I feel that too. And sometimes that's why I don't post stuff after I, I stream it because I'm like, oh, I need, I need to put more time. It needs to be better. It has to be better. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think we, we kind of set ourselves to a pretty uh, high standard when it comes to unveiling things in our socials. Yep. Probably think like, oh, only the best of the best. Um, and, I, I, you know, some people do do that. They don't really post unless it's like absolute top tier quality. Yeah. And I know other people that just want to post for the sake of posting. So, you know, you'll have some mm -hmm. good stuff. You'll have some all right stuff in their eyes. Um, but I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. But I 100% agree with what you're saying. I mean, you know, if you look at my Instagram, I... You know, I don't have a lot of pose because I think I'm more in the camp where I'm like, it needs to be some of the best landscape or it's like time lapses I've, I've done, right? And, yeah. You know, and I, you know, yeah. there's, it's a double edged sword because that can sometimes hinder you like actually posting stuff. And, you know, sometimes we can be a little too critical of our work when other people would be like, wow, this is amazing. So I get both sides of that it's story terrible. and I definitely know what you're talking about, Val. Yeah, I feel like that a lot. Uh, it happens to all of us. So if you, uh, feel nervous about posting stuff on social media because you don't think it's good enough and then you start to feel bad about yourself because you're like if i'm not confident in my work and i can't post it maybe i'm not a professional surprise i have been working as a full-time artist for many many years and i felt like that yesterday <laughs> so don't yeah, i mean that just worry. means you're human and normal everybody yeah. everybody feels that to a certain extent i'd argue brandon saying gotta go Thanks, my class I enjoyed watching today. Thanks for oh, bringing your class to the stream, Brandon. Yeah, pleasure thank you having so much. You it was a pleasure to e-meet you and your students. Um, and I hope that you folks come in again sometime. Um, also, yeah, we'll be here if tomorrow. You, yeah, Same if time. you visit uh, again tomorrow and you're in class and you have questions, um, I would be happy to do any little demos and answer questions for your students 100%. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Good to know. Quick little demos. Helps people out um all right i think i'm i think i'm doing good on like the little greebly things i think it's it, it's really starting to turn out um i assume we have like maybe five or so minutes uh now. we got about yes yeah, seven minutes -ish. okay yeah um i think i could probably like I'm, I am satisfied with this. It needs it needs a tiny bit of love, but it like I am really happy with how it's coming along. I think it's um, it's not you know perfectly movie accurate, but it's accurate enough that you can look at it and you're like I know what that is. Um, and so I'll get into kind of just taking my uh, my um, dissolve brush, my noise brush, and just kind of like painting in some little pieces here just to make it like detailed. And then um, we'll make it a poster tomorrow. Um, but uh, let me see. I feel like I could probably stand to add some detail into the, let me grab. Um, I feel like I could stand to add a little bit of detail um, underneath here. I think we have time. I think we have time for that. Add those small little details. Yeah, and just, you know, start. Clever kind of saying. It's a Star Wars grabby hand greebly thing. Star Wars grabby hand greebly thing. That's exactly grabby what it is. Grabby hand greebly thing. Yup. You know it. That's all we have here. That's all. That's all we got here. That's yeah, all up, I brought Keita with Jones? me. Uh, Keita Jones, a longtime friend that we've seen in the chat. I haven't seen her in a while, but it's good to see her popping in. Yeah, thanks She's for like, joining like, what? Us. You're hosting? I'm like, yeah, you actually got to see the person behind the little icon. So, yeah. hi. <laughs> It also Hi, feels everybody. weird. It, it, like, I'm sure it feels weird for you, like the times that you host, because you're usually behind the scenes. 
and it, it feels really strange to me because I don't I don't actually get to be the guest very often. You know, like I'm usually hosting somebody or I'm doing the game shows or teaching yeah. the DCCs. Um, but like, as you can see, like when we started out today, you were like, all right, we're live in three, two, one. And I just like went on <laughs> autopilot just... and went into host mode. Yeah, Val's got like streamer mode. She just turns on and I was like, work? You got the hosting and the guest here? Let's do it. I'm just Thanks. here for the Star Wars illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, oh no, Val, what did you do? Pa Paco, yeah. this Paco's job. Paco's supposed to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll sit back. Let's, let's do it. Val will do it all. I'll just run production. But, uh, but it, no, it's good. It's I'm good to be in front of the camera. Hearing your voice. Though, yeah. You know, yeah. and if I'm streaming by myself, you're still in the call with me sometimes. I'm if still you there. Yeah, to yeah. Be doing I'm the behind production. the scenes. So it was, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Yeah. No, it's, you know, my my team asked me to host quite a decent amount most of the time. I'm like, ah, I'm running production. Uh, yeah. But I do like to get in front of the camera uh, just to interact with you all in the community. You know, I've been working with this team for a couple of years now. And, you know, half the reason I love this job is because of, you know, the community and everybody that's involved with these streams. So I do like to be on here and say what up and hang out with you all. So it's a good time. You are high key an Adobe Live celebrity, though. Like, I feel like even before oh, you started that. hosting, there's so many people that, like, knew who you were. And I remember the first time you hosted where... You know, everybody was like, hey, you know, tuning in. Who's this? And we're like, that's Paco. And everyone's like, Paco? What? <laughs> like, because yeah. people knew you from, you know, being in chat. Um, a lot of times the guests of the host would be like, also, shout out to Paco behind the scenes. Like, yeah, and everybody's and like, all who's this Paco? Stuff. Who's Paco? He's the secret Adobe Live magician that yeah. makes all this possible, you know? So it was just funny um, that, you know, you when you finally, like, were on the stream, people people knew you. Um, you were, you were yeah. very much loved by the oh, community. Thank you. Right back at the community. I do want to say, I think half the reason... I do go on live is because of the sweet memes that can come from it. So I don't know if you all know our, our very special um, EMEA Adobe producer, Tim Mobest. He's also, mm -hmm. I'd say, an Adobe legend. He has this folder, and I'm not kidding you all, of just memes that he's captured over the years of most of the Adobe staff. So yeah. if, you, if you're tuning in, sometimes I'll sneak in those memes once in a while. You know, it could be like a Val with like Aaron Nay's hot memes. Mm -hmm. He's got like all these like little gifs, gifs, uh, grabs of just people like doing silly stuff in the studio when we used to stream in the studio. So it's so anytime yeah, it's you see fun. those pictures that come up at the end of the show, that is be that is like the stuff from that's that's from hot him. memes. He yeah. also has sound clips of us saying funny things that he will play to us in meetings, and sometimes people think that it's actually me saying things <laughs> and it's just a it's just a sound bite of me cracking a joke from like last year and it's funny he's a funny guy he's got a lot of dirt he's on a us funny guy. i'm gonna have to play some now here's some here's one i don't yes! see a val but hot memes, hot memes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time there's I another met one Aaron. of our val uh, yeah. back in the studio that's oh so god good. that's in like 2016. this is 2017 or 18. yeah because that was before yeah. that was before adobe live that was i think that was um when we did was it no maybe it wasn't because we were doing like adobe it would have been 2018 because that was okay. the that was so the it was studio. beginning of adobe live yeah. okay here's some other hot memes that uh tim has made <laughs> Great, that's a 99 U. There's back I in the studio. It. Oh, that's really small. Oh, you know, that's like beautiful. A little bigger. <laughs> back in the studio days. My favorite one Funny that stuff. he's ever done. Um, I don't know if you have it, but like, and I know that we're running out of time here, but yeah, we've do you have minute. the one where he put a a a record like a DJ? thing underneath you while oh, you're like pointing? DJ Pac. Yeah, where's I, that? Yeah, it's my favorite see. one. Let me see if it's I can find that. Um, he like superposed this he, like really turntable into a GIF of Paco that oh he's, and he's just pointing yeah, at the I camera. You found it? Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I can oh, sneak yes. it in here. Do it, do it. It's my favorite one. It's yeah, the he, best I mean, one. The, like Tim did motion graphics on this. 
Like he did 3D tracking. It's honestly like pretty impressive. And it just, just looks like you had yeah. There we go. That's a that's, that's the 99 the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, what are we so gonna good. do? Um, all right, well, we do got to wrap it up. We did kind of hijack the end there with hot memes, but that's okay. Honestly, that's why we love we're some here. Hot memes. That's, that's why, why we're, we're here. here for the hot memes. The whole plan um, was just to just to make memes. There you go. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Um, I had the pleasure of hosting Voodoo Val. This isn't the end of it. We're going to be live tomorrow again to finish up these illustrations. So please make sure you tune in. Stick around because we do have the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia Vaca. And after that, we have um, Brady from Texture Labs with Andrew Hawk Rattle doing some propaganda posters themed from Star Wars. It's actually yes. very cool. Yes. So stick around for that, my friends. Uh, Valor excited. and I are going to say goodbye for now, but we will be back tomorrow. Bye, so, everybody. See you all later. Thanks for joining Bye. us.